Well, uh, let's get some more now on Jeremy Corbyn's victory. With me now is Hannah Sell, who's the Deputy General Secretary of the Socialist Party. Hi. Thank you uh, for being with us. Uh, you're a socialist, he's a socialist. Are you going to get together? Well, we're very, very happy, that's for certain. This is really a very important day in British politics. It's historic. We've had two decades of pro-austerity, pro-big business politicians, wall-to-wall -wall in Westminster. People like Jeremy have been like prisoners, smuggling out a few messages through the bars. Now we have a chance for anti-austerity, pro-trade union, pro-worker views to be heard in Westminster. So we're very happy about it. But it is only a beginning. And we, if Jeremy is to succeed, we need to build a movement, build on what he started with all these people who voted for him, many of them not previously members of the Labour Party, in all, because they want a movement against austerity. In our view, if he stays confined within the narrow constraints of the current undemocratic structures of the Labour Party, he's not going to succeed. He's got to go outside of that and build a movement, and we want to assist So what does that, that mean? That means that the selectorate of activists should dictate the policies? Well, it shouldn't be the selectorate of the Parliamentary Labour Party. Except they've gone to the trouble of winning election. They have gone to the trouble of winning election, but the, pol the things that they voted for in Parliament of £30 billion worth of cuts, of voting for the welfare reform, of voting in many cases against a war in Iraq and Afghanistan, yeah. have not been the will of their electorate. There is a big anti-austerity mood in society. Labour didn't win the election, not because they were too left-wing, but because they were not left-wing enough. They just echoed austerity light ideas. Well, we need something different. What's the evidence for that? Well, if you look at the facts, there's more than 60% of people in every opinion poll who support renationalisation of Royal Mail, of the privatised energy companies, of the railways, and yet, up until now, yeah. the Parliamentary Labour but Party has voted But there have also been people in opinion those polls those have accepted that there has been a need uh, to keep taxes down and to cut public spending. I think if you look, there is opposition to further no, of course cuts there's opposition, but in I mean, our what, public but services. I don't, I, I, people, I don't know quite what you're advocating, because... The people. purpose of a parliament, the purpose of an election, is to choose people who then take decisions and stand on manifestos. You seem to be saying that a self-selected group of people I'm not who saying... agree with each other should dictate what happens. I'm not saying anything of the kind. I think anti-austerity ideas are extremely popular. And the reason that Labour was not able to win the general election is because they couldn't mobilise the more than four million people who had stopped voting Labour because they wanted something different. And those people instead either stayed at home, they voted for the Greens, in some cases they voted for ourselves in the Trade Unionist and Socialist Coalition, some voted UKIP in their anger and frustration. I think an anti-austerity point of view will be very popular um, and should be heard in Parliament, whereas it absolutely hasn't been up until now. But what has changed since the last time Labour won elections with a centrist approach under Tony Blair? They won three elections running. Well, actually, after Tony's first election, then their vote went down and down every time. And I think many of the things they did were not popular. But all that was on offer is Labour or the Tories. There were not other alternatives. And Labour were putting forward pro-big yeah. business policies so, and ignoring the will of the majority. The so, majority were not in favour of the war in Iraq, and yet Tony Blair went ahead anyway. Well, so I come back to the point about the Socialist Party. Now that Jeremy Corbyn is leading the Labour Party, is there a need for the Socialist Party? Absolutely there's a need for the Socialist Party. The fight against austerity is going to have to be inside and outside of the Labour Party. Jeremy is going to be potentially very isolated in the Parliamentary Labour Party. There are only nine members of the Socialist Campaign Group of MPs. It's clear, unfortunately, they are going to do the majority of the Parliamentary Labour Party all they can to marginalise him, to isolate him, to stop him being effective in putting forward anti-austerity views. We can help build a movement to prevent that. For example, next May's council elections, the majority of Labour councillors standing will be supporting further cuts in public services. A minority, 6%, I think, of Labour councillors backed Jeremy Corbyn. We, in the Socialist Party and the Trade Unionists and Socialist Coalition, will be very happy to support anti-cuts Jeremy Corbyn Labour candidates. But Labour candidates who are going to close our libraries, are going to evict people for the bedroom tax, who are going to continue to carry out austerity, we will build an anti-austerity electoral alternative to them. Outside. OK, we'll see what happens. Hannah, okay, thank you very thank much you indeed. Very much.